is electromagnetic induction. Okay, so uh, what we have in the first graphic there is a magnetic, is a magnet, and it's uh, near a coil. So uh, it says there, when there is no relative motion between the coil or wire and the bar magnet, there is no what in the coil? What, what am I going to put in the coil? Current. No current. So fill that in. No current in the coil. A current is created in the coil when the magnet moves. Okay. We'll say toward the coil. Okay, that's in part B. And also moves in part C. A current also exists when the magnet moves away from the coil. So it just basically it just has to be moving. Okay. All right. Uh, other things you can do is you can change the shape of the coil. So on the right-hand side there, it says no current exists in a coil of constant area. So if the area is not moving or changing, there's not going to be a current. All right. Uh, that is located in a constant magnetic field. So the area has to be changing or the magnetic field has to be changing. Okay, and picture B there says, while well, the area of the coil is changing and induced EMF. Okay, remember we talked about inducing EMF. EMF is just another word for what? Electric. Voltage, yeah. Electromotive force, but just think of it as voltage. Okay. All right, and an induced EMF and current are also produced when the coil is rotating. Okay. All that has to happen is the um, two things. Either the magnet has to be moving back and forth, okay, or we've got <clears throat> the magnetic field changing or the shape of the coil changing. All right? Okay. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Yes? Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Electromagnetic induction. Okay. Uh, you're right. It says, um, it, well, we need to include here, it says, an induced current, you're right, an induced current is brought about by a changing magnetic field. So we have to have a changing magnetic field to uh, produce a current. The resulting EMF is called an induced EMF. Thank you. So that's the big picture. So the 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 magnetic field has to be changing, or the shape of it has to be changing. How come when you have a magnetic field in order to? What this shows is here. Okay, so what what this diagram shows is that we've got this um, basically this wire, right? This object here is moving in that direction. Okay, a wire moving in a magnetic field is going to produce its own EMF, all right? And let's look at um, why that is. Okay, let's look at why that is. Um, let's, um, let's go back to this. So again, the EMF produced by a moving um, wire in a magnetic field produces, uh, is produced by the velocity of the um, moving wire, the magnetic field that it's going through, and the length of the wire. All right? So, in, what's that? Yes. So, remember, we think of this as being the same as V, that little symbol of EMF. Okay? So, um, it says, suppose the above the rod is moving at a speed of 5 meters per second in a direction perpendicular to a 0.8 Tesla magnetic field. The rod has a length 1.6 meters and a negligible electrical resistance. The rails also have negligible resistance. The light bulb, however, has a resistance of 96 ohms. Find the EMF produced. So all we got to do there is plug into the, the equation, okay, of the EMF is equal to VBL. So what, what am I going to plug in for V? Okay, 5 meters per second, the magnetic field. Okay, 0.8 Tesla, the length. Okay, 1.6 meters. I'm leaving my units out because I'm out of uh, room here. So what, my answer comes out as 6.4, but my units should be what? Volts. Okay, 
Then it says, find the induced current in the circuit. So remember, they tell us that the bulb is 96 ohms. So if I'm going to find the current, how would I go about solving that? Good. It's the EMF or the voltage divided by the resistance. Remember, that's Ohm's law. So 6.4 volts. I should say 6.4 volts. Divided by... Oops. Uh divided by 96 ohms gives me a value of 0 0.067 amps. Okay, then it says, find the electrical power delivered to the bulb. Okay, so remember one of my power equations is I times V. In this case, it's gonna be I times EMF. Okay, so the current I'm gonna use is 0 0.0 six, seven amps. My voltage or EMF that I'm going to use is 6.4 volts. And I get a value of 0 0.43 watts. 0 0.43 watts. Okay. Then it says find the energy used by the bulb in 60 seconds. All right. So remember, the power equation is an equation that we can use um, several ways. So we know that the energy is a power divided by the time or the work done divided by the time. So if I solve that for the energy, it's the power times the time. Okay? It's a tricky, it's a sneaky little equation. All right? Because we can give us the energy, and the energy is always a really helpful quantity. So the power I'm going to plug in is 0 0.3, 0 0.43 watts. Okay? And I'll multiply that times 60 seconds and I get a value of 26 joules that are used in that time, okay? But here's what you should notice, okay? Well, as it moves, look, look what happens <coughs> as, it, as the current, so here's my, here's my setup, right? So this is the exact same setup that I have up, well, this is supposed to be the similar setup. So I move this along this wire and I move it that way. Okay, so now, so now I've got not only do um, have I produced a current, right? Now I've got a current going through this 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 um, through this wire, right? So I've got a current moving in a magnetic field. So what should happen if I've got a current in a magnetic field? It should be another force, okay? So here's what happens. As I push this through the magnetic field, right? Remember, the, the, just, the, just the act of pushing it through makes this a battery, okay? And so now that it's become a battery, if I set it up so that my, I've got current moving this way, look what happens to the current. My finger, remember my fingers point down? I'm going to point my thumb in the direction of the current. My, if my thumb points in the direction of the current, what's my what's uh, the direction of the palm um, represent? Yeah, it's going to produce another force. So as I push it this way, there's actually going to be a resistive force pushing the opposite direction. So in order to maintain this um, this current, I've got to push it at a constant velocity that matches that same force. Okay, so you don't get something for nothing, all right? Okay, so <coughs> that's an important um, uh, that's an important topic that we need to make sure we we cover there, all right? Is that um, there's going to be another force that opposes this um, the original force that was pushing it. So the original force was in this direction. Now we got that force in that direction. Okay. Now it says, this problem says, an external agent supplies 0.086 newtons of force that keeps the rod moving at a constant speed of 5 meters per second. Determine the work done in 60 seconds by the external agent. All right? So I would have a force. So if we look at this, the force that's, that, that the current's going to experience is ILB sine theta. Okay? And I'll just give you the answer to this because we're running out of time. 
that force is going to be equal to 0 0.086 newtons. Okay. All right. Um, and so, was that was that already on there? No, yeah. Oh, okay. So we actually produce that force. So it says determine the work done. Okay. Our work that we can figure out, our work would be the force times the distance, F times, is it X in your equation sheet? Okay, X times, or F times R, okay? And since the distance it's going to move, right, is going to be, R is going to be the velocity times the time, okay? This equation really becomes the work is equal to the force times the velocity times the time. So if I take that 0 0.086 newtons, and I multiply it times the velocity of 5 meters per second and the time of 60 seconds, okay, I actually get a value of 26 joules. Why is that so important? Yeah, so the amount of, the amount of work that I'm putting into the system, the amount of energy that I'm putting into the system is the same amount of energy that I'm getting out of the light bulb. Okay, so be really um, be uh, really cautious of this problem. Okay, it shows up on the AP test. It's a really easy question. There are a bunch of really simple parts to it. Okay, all right. Now the second topic for today. The second topic for today is the magnetic flux. All right, <coughs> magnetic flux is really easy. All you have to think about when it comes to magnetic flux is this, right? Let's say that I've got a certain area of um, a certain area that I'm drawing into the paper here. Okay, if there's a magnetic field that goes into this area, okay, I can determine the flux that goes into that area by just taking the magnetic field. Okay, whatever the value of the magnetic field is going through there and multiplying it times the area. Okay, that's all the flux is. Okay? It's a, actually a really, really easy concept. Um, sounds really cool. You know, it sounds cool, yeah. Now, this cosine of phi depends on the direction of the magnetic field. Sometimes, so in the example I've given you, the magnetic field could, um, would be perpendicular if it was off axis by a little bit you would use that angle and use a cosine of theta to figure out the magnetic flux if it was not directly going through it. Okay? All right. And the units for the flux, um, you can use, I've always pronounced it Weber's. Okay? I've heard people pronounce it as Weber's. Okay? All right. So it says, um, the graphical interpretation of the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux is proportional to the number of field lines that passes through a surface. Okay? Now we're going to study Faraday's law. Okay? Faraday's law says the change in the flux over the time is going to equal the EMF that we produce. So in that same problem that we calculated uh, the EMF for, we can do the same thing by using this equation. Okay? Now, remember what we said the flux is. The flux is the magnetic field times the area. So really, this equation is this. This equation is the EMF, and we'll talk, I'm going to leave the negative sign out. We'll talk about that later. The EMF is the change in the flux, okay, over the change in the time, which is really the change in the magnetic field times the change in the area over the change in the time. Now, I will tell you that on the AP test, they're not going to make it this complicated. They will they will only either, they'll only change either the flux or the area. Okay? So really, I would look at it as this equation. They will probably keep, they, they may keep the area constant, but change the flux over time. Or they'll keep the magnetic field constant and change the area. In both cases, that's really easy. Okay? All right, so... This is the EMF in a coil that can be produced in a coil by changing the flux through it. All right? All right. So, um, 
uh, that particular problem that we have, I'm going to actually have you, this particular problem, I'm going to actually have you calculate that, practice that. That's actually pretty easy. I need to explain Lenz's Law real quickly. Okay? Lenz's Law is another one of those pretty tough concepts to visualize. So, really need your attention, kind of paying attention to this right now. Okay? So, let's say that I've got Let's say that I've got a coil of wire, okay? Now, <clears throat> we said that the magnetic field, a changing magnetic field in any watt near any wire is going to produce a what? A current, okay? It's got to be a changing magnetic field. But one of the things you guys will be asked is, what is the direction of that current, okay? So... To understand how to solve that question, we need to um, understand Lenz's law. All right? So what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to start off with this current, or I'm going to start off with this wire. Okay? I'm going to assume this wire is like, hor it's like a horizontal wire, a uh, horizontal loop. Does that make sense? I'm trying to draw it in perspective there. Okay? Now, um, what we need, what I'm going to show you is, the um, the first thing that I'm going to show you is the magnetic field. So there's a magnetic field going through it all the way through, and I'm going to draw it like this. Oops. I'm just going to draw it out like that. Okay. You, you may end up needing more space than this. Okay. So originally, this is the magnetic field. Okay. That's the, that's the original magnetic field. <coughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to erase... Um, all of those arrows, except the one on the far left, to show you, um, to show this as sort of, sort of show this to you a little differently. Okay? Now, let's imagine that that magnetic field is, um, that magnetic field is all the way through, just like I'm showing up there. Does that make sense? Okay? I'm just, I just haven't drawn the other lines. Okay? Now, let's say that magnetic field changes. Okay? Let's say that magnetic field changes so that the magnetic field is no longer as strong. It, um, a second later, it is that strong. It's gone down. So the length is determining how strong the magnetic field is. Okay? And then let's say it decreases even more a second later. Then a second later after that, it becomes just a dot. Okay? So these magnetic fields still go all the way across. Okay? They're just changing in their strength and direction. Okay? No magnetic field. Okay? And then a split second later, I get a magnetic field that's pointing in the opposite direction that goes like that. Okay? And it's increasing in the other direction. All right? So here's what we're going to say. Okay? So, so we start off as a strong magnetic field pointing downward. Then it got weaker downward and even weaker to where it became zero. Then it started pointing the other direction and got stronger. All right? So here's what happens. Um, Lenz's law, um, the result of Lenz's law is this. What actually happens is this. A changing magnetic field will produce an induced magnetic field that wants to maintain the previous magnetic field. Okay, so let me say that again. A changing magnetic field will produce an induced magnetic field that wants to maintain the previous magnetic field. Okay? What's that? Yes. So, yeah, go ahead. So, the induced magnetic field from the original magnetic field, like you took the induced one, it would induce the original magnetic field. Okay, let me show you what's gonna, go, going to happen. Okay? So, what's going to happen is this. I'm going to show a new magnetic field. Okay, so this magnetic field I'm going to use, use using these green um, arrows, all right? So this original magnetic field was this length here, okay? The induced magnetic field is going to try to maintain that original magnetic field. But then the magnetic field changes again, so then the magnetic, the, an induced magnetic field shows up again. Right? It's trying to maintain that original magnetic field. Now it's gone down to zero, so I've got another magnetic field that's trying to maintain this previous magnetic field. Okay? Uh, it just goes to the previous one, which is one right before it. Exactly. It's trying to maintain this new magnetic field 
is trying to maintain the previous magnetic field. Okay? So, a changing magnetic field, again, produces a induced magnetic field that's trying to maintain the original magnetic field. All right? Okay, now, so we've made this induced magnetic field. This induced magnetic field, so let me use blue as my new color here. Um, I'm going to use a different color. Uh, I'm going to use dark blue here. So now I'm going to get <coughs> a current, okay? So this induced magnetic field will make an induced current, okay? An induced current that is based off the right-hand rule for the induced magnetic field, okay? So the induced magnetic field is pointing which way? Through that hoop, downward. So if I grab, if I point my fingers downward through that magnetic field, okay, um, my thumb is going to point, so this induced magnetic field points downward, my thumb is going to um, go along this direction in that coil. All right? Okay. All right. So... Let me um, show you in my example here.